Hey everyone, Sergio P here. And if this shot looks a little different than usual, it's because we'll be talking about this wonderful little pancake lens, the Fuji 18mm F2, which is usually the lens I shoot these videos with. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sergio. I've been a full-time commercial photographer for the last 10 years. And if you're back for another Fuji review, what's up? How's the back feeling this week? I asked you guys on a community post what your go-to camera system was, and I got an absolutely overwhelming amount of you that shoot Fuji, which makes sense. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, I'm a photographer and I make videos and I happen to also shoot Fuji. But in the real world, people are always shocked when they see me shooting Fuji. Most people only associate Fujifilm with the Instax and forget about their digital cameras. So it's cool that we've got like a little pocket of Fuji fans here. I know I've got a new camera system instead of the X-Pro3 coming, but let's just say I didn't give up on the family. When I was first switching to Fuji, I had picked up this 18mm f2 and it's still the only lens that I have from when I had first switched over. I feel like I never reach for this lens when I have it, but it's also the first lens I find I'm missing if I don't bring it in my bag. And it's so small, it's almost never worth not bringing. With such a versatile focal length that works for a variety of the types of shoots, at least the ones that I do, technical specs aside, I think that 28mm equivalent is a beautiful storytelling focal length. It allows you to photograph a scene, without feeling too lost and not having a subject to focus on. That's why I think it's the ideal lens for a Fuji street photographer. As much as I don't make money with street photography personally, so take what I say with a grain of salt, I just do it for fun. This is the only lens I shoot all my street photos with. Call me old school, but I'm a stickler for that Bruce Gilden candid close-up style of street photography. I want the subjects to know they're getting their photo taken. And this 28 just allows me to get right in their face and still be able to tell a bit about their environment. This isn't the only solution for street, but it works for me. And hooked up on the X-Pro3 here, like, I mean, does it really get sexier than this? It came with a metal lens hood and it's squared off. I, I can't tell you how many times people have asked me if this was a Leica. If you saw my video last week, you'll know that the flippy screen on my camera died, but between the rangefinder, I guess no screen now, and the 28, this is the setup you need if you're tired of spending hundreds of bucks a week on film, but you still want that aesthetic. I know you all know about the Fuji simulations at this point, but as with any camera, taking a raw photo and bringing it into Capture One or Lightroom, but you should really be switching to Capture One. But with doing that, your possibilities are always much more limitless. Now, what about a wide lens for portraits? I know a lot of people say not to use wide lenses for portraits and I can totally understand where they're coming from, but as with anything, time and place matters. In this case, what's your story? Who's your subject? Are you shooting a hardcore band all up close and they wanna look badass and larger than life? Boom, wide lens. You can totally go crazy and get a fisheye, but this 28 allows you to be fully wide and all encompassing, but still be relatively, you know, like square, like rectilinear all around. You don't really get any noticeable bow distortion. You can create that fisheye vignette look in your composition, but the lens is gonna do a relatively good job at managing that distortion overall. I think a lens like this also works really well for fashion shoots. If you wanna exaggerate your subject, the textures and the flowiness of their outfits, then yeah, a wide lens like this is awesome. Think of like high-waisted pants at a busy downtown intersection with sky rises in the background and your subject doing like huge exaggerated steps. Wide lens, man. It's even got such a great close focus. It can allow you to do some weird like POV style shots if that's your vibe. Maybe dangle your feet off of a rooftop and take a picture, things like that. If you're careful with your framing, you can get some really astonishing results at 28 mil. If you're liking this video guys, real quick, if you could hit that like button and let me know. And comment down below what Fuji you're shooting with lately. I did just pick up a new camera already, but I'm always interested in what other people are shooting and creating with. And speaking of, I've also been really impressed with this lens for interiors. As much as it's not a rectilinear, super duper straight lens and definitely can't compete with like a tilt shift or a technical camera, this lens does work in a pinch. And depending on your client, so long as it's not the building developer asking to represent their $100 million investment, this lens will probably do the trick for you. Because the optics are so solid with this lens, I can shoot an ever so slightly wider frame of my interiors and compensate for that distortion using the very simple but effective keystone tool here on Capture One. I'm pretty sure I remember Lightroom also having this feature, but the algorithm that analyzes the image is so much smarter using the Capture One software. I can always tweak it if it doesn't make sense, but quite honestly, the auto feature does a pretty good job most of the time. However, if you are looking for a bit of that natural distortion, this lens is also fully capable and useful here when it comes to my product photography. We covered that the minimum focusing distance is incredible. It's only a couple inches, but usually that'll mean your camera is so close into the scene that you probably can't effectively light your product. This slight distortion effect is still evident when the camera is further back 
And sure, you'd have to like crop into your image to have something usable, but you'll still get that wide lens look on your product, which sometimes is exactly what you're looking for. I'm thinking like a lipstick, if you wanna make them look longer and larger than life again, you still want them to look natural. If you wanna extend a product, a wide lens is a great way to do that. And there's no reason that this Fuji lens is gonna hinder you. When I switched over from Canon, I wanted to make sure I had all my favorite focal lengths covered. And I think Fuji does a great job at offering really high quality prime lenses like this 18 mil at very affordable prices. The lens is great. And even 10 years after its release, I can't imagine you'd be disappointed with this lens. If 18 mil slash 28 mil equivalent focal length is what you're looking for, the science of lens optics didn't change. If it was good enough for 2013, it'll be good enough for 2023. I'll throw a wrench in that statement when it comes to video work, but we'll get back to video in just a sec. As with most Fuji lenses, I'm a little bummed that it only stops down to f16. Not that I often shoot at f22, but if a lens stops down to 22, then should theoretically behave a little bit better at f16 than a lens that maxes out at f16. That's not necessarily an uncommon focal length for me, at least in the product world. Of all my other Fuji lens reviews, my favorite feature is still that the aperture ring is on the lens itself. Love that feature, but I hate how easy it is to knock out of place. This, this 18 is probably the worst out of all my other Fuji lenses. The grooves are so loose, it just goes where it wants. I always have to double, triple check to make sure that my aperture is where I want it to be. Fuji, put a lock on the aperture ring, okay? Cool, much appreciated. Now, video with this guy. Image quality is fine, maybe a little too sharp at times, but I'd rather have something too sharp that I can soften with filters than a dull lens, so this works for me. However, when it comes to autofocus, even just focusing in general, it's pretty subpar. I mean, let me show you. Hey, thanks Sergio. This is Sergio here, and I just wanted to show you guys a little example of what it's like with the 28, show you how wide it is, how it looks. This is the autofocus as well on the X-Pro3, just handheld as I'm walking around. Let me know what it looks like. How's she doing back there? Well, there we go. Back to the studio, Sergio. Thank you. You're not gonna get the manual focus ring to work. Honestly, just don't even bother. And the autofocus is fast, but it's super duper choppy, jumpy, kind of like you just saw. It's fast, but it's just not fluid. Works great for stills, but not very much ideal for video. If you can cut around the focusing or you just don't care about it, then yeah, sure, it's fine. What works best for me is that since it's a wide lens, I usually just set the focus to infinity, keep everything about a meter away and everything's gonna be in focus. Do you need this lens? Yeah, probably. It's like the widest you wanna go without starting to look too weird and distorted. It's fast at f2 and fast with its autofocus. You honestly won't be disappointed with this purchase, especially if you can find one for like three, 400 bucks. The compact form factor with a small Fuji like the X-Pro3 really make this combo a match made in traveling heaven. You can hang this around your neck and cross airline security without anyone thinking that it's not a film camera. And meanwhile, you have enough resolution to shoot billboard ads straight out of this thing. Pick it up, you're gonna love it, and come back to this video and let me know how much you do love it. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. I've got some really exciting collaboration videos coming up in the next couple weeks. It's gonna be really fun. And until then, stay safe, keep shooting, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.